Hey, thanks for checking out the video. As always, this is Sho, and this video here is going to be sort of a recap uh, on the Japanese and English differences that I kind of looked at and, and checked out when I played the English demo for Monarch. Once again, it's not necessarily a demo, it's the entire first chapter of the game, so it's a good three to four hours worth of content. I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in the game, it's fantastic. But this video here is going to be sort of a recap as I talked off and on about some of the differences between the Japanese and English versions that I noticed. And while in general, I didn't feel there was much of a change, there were certain things when I kind of went back and took a look again that I noticed that I felt were a little bit off and I wanted to sort of um, make those points clear from what I've observed. So uh, if you enjoy that sound and you uh, support this sort of content, please feel free to, to like the video, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have any questions as well, I'd be happy to answer them. And yeah, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, every little bit helps the channel grow and it's your, it's my way of feeling your love. So thank you so much for sending your love my way. Now, um, let's go into the big stuff. Um, there's three main points I wanna cover for this video. Number one, I wanna talk about console differences since I know this is a huge thing with people who wanna get this on the PlayStation. Uh, I've been answering a few questions on Twitter about this already because uh, I've noticed people asking Nisa about it and then kind of being tight-lipped, but there are uh, there's information about that. Two, talking about region differences. So this is things I've just noticed between playing uh, the English and the English demo version and the Japanese version in its entirety. And then just a little bit commenting at the end towards the voiceover uh, and language differences since I do have a bit of a bone to pick with them. So. Let's jump in and talk about our first point, the console differences. Now, there's no difference. <laughs> um, this this is something. Uh, I have a source that I'm going to put in the description. It is in Japanese. Believe it or not, uh, this is actually a huge thing in Japan. A large part of the gaming sphere uh, has not been too happy with Sony uh, here in Japan due to the fact of the whole Sony censorship model that they're going for and their more recent catering towards Western demographics and audiences believe it or not so um yeah this is obviously something that many japanese gamers are concerned about so there is a site that i'll link below basically there is no differences between the japanese switch and ps4 versions of course the ps4 has better graphics so i will admit to that <laughs> so um if you want to have sort of a better graphical experience by all means play it on the playstation 4 otherwise uh, in terms of content, it should be exactly the same. I will point out, though, that this is, of course, based on the Japanese versions. I don't know if they're going to do anything for the Western release. Going through that, I'll talk a little bit more about it soon, but I didn't notice too much. So if you've played uh, the PlayStation demo and the Switch demo in English, maybe uh, you can drop a comment below and let us know if there's anything you've noticed if you play both of the English demos. Um, I'm sure there'd be people in the audience who would really get some uh, first-hand accounting. Unfortunately, I don't have my PlayStation 4 anymore, which was probably a um, bad decision on my part. But yeah, let me know if you've played both demos and if you notice any differences yourself between the consoles in the West. All right, so now that we've gone through the console differences, uh, let's talk about the region differences. Honestly speaking, scene by scene, it seems exactly the same. Uh, remembering kind of actually I even went through and replayed uh, the Japanese version of the beginning chapter one one more time and scene by scene I don't see any major differences so I don't see any cuts or edits between the English and the Japanese releases on the switch which I think is great the big difference that comes in of course is just language differences now there are just a few I want to point out um, obviously there's a, a lot of small minor language changes which I'm going to get into a little bit more in the last section because I feel like there is certain things that I have an issue with, but some of the big ones are just ability names. Specifically, uh, let's talk about a few of the main ones that all the characters deal with. The um, so a lot of them are centered actually around the madness and the awakening gauges. So, for example, you'll use your resolve skill to build up your awakening gauge. In Japanese, this is ketsui which is used to basically mean determination or resolution, but it does have a heavy emphasis on like committing to your idea or to committing clearly to a specific um, plan or a thought. So I guess uh, Resolve can make a lot of sense with that, which I'm not really too bothered by. Going kind of, I guess, a step up from that, you have uh, Enlightenment. So this is when the Madness Gauge and the Awakening Gauge are both at 100% and you have that sort of extra power. 
in Japanese, this literally translates into Madness Awakening. So, uh, yeah, literally it's uh, Hakkyo Kakusei, which I think is a bit more of a maybe... Enlightenment is more, a little bit more of a poetic way to say it. Um, Hakkyo basically means, like, uh, insanity or some kind of abnormality of the mind, whereas Kakusei is basically being sort of um, awakened or cognizant of... I guess your situation. So I guess if you're in a poetic way, again, it sort of makes sense. Like you're being cognizant of the abnormalities in your mind, which I guess can kind of play into the idea of enlightenment, having that deeper, true understanding of yourself. So I think that that can make sense. For me, though, the personal biggest one that I wanted to flag is the main character's skill. So as we all know, he's a pack bearer with Vanitas, and his main skill allows him to link with other people, which is known as resonance. This is interesting because the Japanese word that they use to describe this skill is kyokan, empathy. Now, this is huge for me because uh, without spoiling much in the future, the changing this term from empathy to resonance, I feel changes sort of the subtext of the game. There's a deeper meaning that sort of, I think, becomes lost because Empathy makes a lot more sense with events that happen later on. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to talk anymore, but that I think is a very interesting one. And maybe after a little bit, the game comes out more. Uh, maybe I'll do sort of like a, a story recap or a story discussion that you can be a part of. But in the meantime, just to recap the region differences, no major changes between uh, the Japanese and the Western Switch ports. And aside, the only major difference is just uh, minor changes to some of the names of the skills. All right, so let's get into the, the third part, which is talking about the voiceovers. Now, okay, I'm, I'm not a professional uh, voice actor by no means. Uh, I don't have good vocal training. I'm a horrible singer. Clearly, just listening to my voice might be nails on a chalkboard for some of you. I don't like the voice acting of this game in English. I'm sorry. Um, I think that they're trying, they're probably being guided for a certain kind of performance, but I, I feel like it just completely misses the beat. This is one of those games um, very much similar to like Shin Megami Tensei where the way characters are depicted, their names, the way they talk, all of it has a certain symbolism and meaning towards it. And I feel like perhaps the voice actors and actresses were given a direction with the character but don't necessarily have the context involved to really perform at it. Now, uh, not not all of the voice, uh, not all the voice acting is bad. For example, Nozomi, I think, fits. Um, the voice actress for Nozomi makes her sound quite plain, which sounds bad. But Nozomi in the Japanese sort of um, mentality is meant to be like a grounded character. She's the most normal person, and her voice actress in the Japanese version sort of makes her out to be the normal girl. She's not, you know, super go lucky. She's not super cutesy. She's not super stylish. She's fairly plain. And that's communicated very much in the way she talks and the way she accents her voice and everything like that. And I think the voice actress in English sort of does that by making her sound quite plain, which fits, which fits. On the other hand, I can't say the same for most of the other casts. Especially Vanitas. Um, Vanitas made me cringe really hard quite a few times when I went through the English version. Um, all right, so typically in Japan, in Japanese games, when you have a character, you, you, you will always change the language, um, whether it's the dialect or the actual language itself, to communicate differences of character. For example, uh, many characters who are considered to be foreign or extraterrestrial or not from the place that they are, but quite separated away, will usually speak English as everyone else is speaking Japanese. This is actually found in games like Okami and uh, Bravely Second, where certain characters, I won't spoil them, who are from other worlds speak English to the other members of the other worlds. And that is to communicate the fact that they are different. They are not the same. Uh, this is found commonly in the Western translations by having them speak French. 
So if you actually play Bravely Second, you probably understand the reference right there by having random French, or Okami as well, having random French dropped into your game. That signifies someone being from another world. This is also done a lot when talking about different dialects. So typically in Japan, most Japanese you will hear that's that's done in games is done with the Kanto or the Tokyo style accent, which is a very plain, clear, straightforward way. But if they want to emphasize a certain characteristic, whether they're a little bit more rough around the edges, they'll go for something a little bit more of a Kansai style, which is a little bit more emotional, a little bit more harder to follow, a little bit more rough. Uh, and this is done, of course, in, in lots of Western media as well. So when talking about Vanitas specifically, there's two major points that I just have a big bone to pick. The first point is Vanitas in the Japanese voiceover is an old man. Uh, when you he when you hear him, he's old, and when he's speaking, he's speaking in a grandiose way. Here, let's listen to a clip of it right now. This is when you first meet Vanitas. <laughs> So from that small performance, we can infer pretty much three solid points about Vanitas' character. First, he sounds quite old, which means he likely has a lot of experience and he has a certain hierarchy that he plays with him. So that already tells us that this is a person who likely knows more than everyone else does. He's probably the most well-informed character because he has that level of experience and hierarchy or seniority you can refer to it as. Second, he speaks in a grandiose way, basically explaining to the character how powerful he is. I mean, he in fact, he, he says things like, you know, this is fate and, you know, grandeur at my power, run in fear and cower away. Like he's using a lot of these grandiose, almost megalomaniac statements to paint or illustrate this point that he is super powerful even though that the main character sort of disregards him because he looks absolutely adorable and doesn't have any of that power, he is emphasizing that fact of I am powerful. Third, which also is a very interesting touch, is how his words are stylized on the text and the screen. Most of what he says is stylized as katakana. Now, this is used a lot in manga to refer to sort of slang, but it's used a lot to say that something or someone is not human. It's clearly identifying here that his speech patterns are abnormal. It's robotic. It's not a human being. This is something with a larger plan or a certain um, objective or script that does not make it relatable to anyone who is a human. Now, these three points definitely all play into Vinicius's character. So let's see how the English interprets this. Ephemeral, eternal. And so too do I hold your destiny. Yoink. Wait, wait, unhand me, you uncouth, unkind underling. The impudence instantly interrupting my interlude. So the solution is to have him speak in rhymes or in limericks. I mean, if we take the old to young change aside, which is already a sort of a huge difference of character perception, I understand that English does not have a certain way like in Japanese where you can change the script to convey uh, a certain lack of humanity. Though to completely change the speech patterns to move from, I guess, a robotic sense of, which is sort of what that katakana refers to, to speaking in rhymes like he is a jester or the joker definitely is a difference of perception with his character and i don't think it does enough justice to it vanitas in the japanese version is wise powerful knowledgeable and most importantly has a lot of experience to back it up the english interpretation i feel just is like 
a young kid trying to be mysterious and cool, but not really doing anything useful. <laughs> and the catch with Venus is that he is arguably the most useful party member or the useful uh, member of your group for the entire game all the way up until the end. So yeah, I just, I can't get behind that change. So yeah, you know, I, I really respect him in the Japanese version, don't respect him in the English version. Aside from that point, though, I do admit that I think the localizers and the translators did a pretty good job keeping the script as close as they possibly could. Obviously, there's always those um, cultural points that won't always be communicated too well. Uh, just a small example of this is uh, Kodama and Sora's uh, opening kind of spiel. So, you know, after you meet Kodama and he's talking to Nozomi, Principal Sora shows up. And in the English version, he's I mean, Kodama's quite condescending, right? He's like, well, well, Principal Sora. And then in the next scene, he's trying to talk with her, like, you know, like he's a member of the faculty, right? Like, we should do this, we need to do this, we have to set the example. In the Japanese version, it's a little bit more nuanced, right? Um, he has a very similar opening. Rather than, well, well, he basically says, kore wa, kore wa. And that has a, in the same general connotation, right? It's something that like a final boss would say as a an ironic statement, like, well, here you've made it. I, wow, this is ironic. So it does have a sort of condescending sense and a prideful sense, which obviously is the main stick for his character. Though uh, I do think that Sora's response to him in Japanese is a lot more layered. He tries to speak with her as if he's on her same level, which of course is a social taboo, which shows his pride. But her response to him is not as, I guess, like, emotional. I feel like the English version is a lot more like, oh, we're so grateful, thank you so much. Where in the Japanese version, you can clearly tell that, yeah, yeah, we're very thankful, but know your place. There's a certain uh, kind of sarcasm that she communicates, like a mother would be talking to their child or a, a teacher, right, to their student, which is the case. So aside from just those small points, I think that a lot of the script matches exactly what the game wants to communicate. It's just the minor changes here or there. Anyway, uh, this video is definitely gone a little bit longer than I expected. Um, but anyway, I hope this was really helpful for anyone watching. Uh, if you're very curious about any of the console or region differences, hopefully you have that information now. So you're a, bit, you're a little bit more well informed for making your purchase. And yeah, if anyone is actually playing the demos or play the Japanese version on the PS4, yeah, comment below. Let everyone else know as well if you notice any differences yourself. And if you stayed for my little voiceover rant, Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just feel like the voiceover is just something I really want to talk about a bit more. So I do appreciate you sticking around. Thank you for that. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed the contents here and you picked up some good information, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more coverage of this game, uh, showing off how to complete some of the trophies and how to take care of some of the uh, game mechanics. And of course, I'll be have the full attack review coming out towards the middle of February, uh, which hopefully, uh, can give you some extra information in terms of what you want to do or with this game. Anyway, this is show and thank you so much. I'll catch you next time. Cheers!